Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage. Today we're going to be working on swapping out some of the upper control arms on the Civic today. Um, now one thing to pay attention to on this is it is not perfectly symmetrical here. Um, and you can see that there is a right and left side. Uh, granted, it does only still have rubber bushings, but it's going to be way better than what's in the car as it's been super beat up and worn out. So we're going to go ahead and get this on there and uh, we're going to hopefully get a little bit better ride and maintain some of the adjustability. Okay, so I guess I should explain what this giant hole in my shock tower is. Um, I had to do a little bit of research to figure out why the hell someone would do this. Well, come to find out, the Honda community, when they absolutely slam their cars, the upper control arm, which you can see here is the little blue piece, um, will actually come up and strike the control tower, um, shock tower. So people will cut this hole. Now, there are blanking plates that I can put on top of that, which I've already ordered, so we'll be fixing that in the future. But for now, I'll kind of show you how to take, uh, what we need to do to take this upper control arm off. So here we have our first bolt here. And we have a second bolt that's down right here. Um, so there's just one bolt on each side, so that's bolting each of the legs. And then we have the ball joint here, which connects to the, the, the arm there. You can kind of see that ball joint with the castle nut. So what we'll do is we'll start by taking the wheel off, uh, jack the car up, and then uh, we'll start taking bolts off. He's playing over. Yeah. So we got the old control arm, uh, upper control arm out of here. Uh, you can see it's pretty rusty, pretty beat up. And then this ball joint is essentially seized and uh, has blown out, lost everything. So it's good that we're swapping this out. One of the things you probably saw us using is this uh, ball joint separator. So this helps out a lot. If you can't bang it out with a hammer, just grab one of these. It'll just hook onto the arm and then you just tighten it, pops it right out, super easy. So now we've got this one out, we're gonna throw the new one in. All right, so one of the things to remember when you're doing this is don't tighten down the uh, strut tower side all the way uh, because then it'll cause the, uh, it'll cause the control arm to, to bind and you need it to kind of swing up and down so you can get the ball joint installed. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna install the ball joint and then I'm gonna finish tightening down uh, the bolts inside the, in, inside the engine bay. Okay, so the new control arm is now in there. I got the camber plate uh, all tightened up and then retightened the bolts on the inside of the engine bay. Uh, one nice thing design-wise that's different is this one has the adjustment on top of the control arm, so it's almost impossible to get to without going through the hole. But the new ones have the adjustment from the bottom side, so I can easily get to it from the fender well. Uh, so. Now, once I cap that off, we're not gonna have to worry about it anymore. All right, so we've got this side all completed. It's, everything's all bolted back up. Now we're gonna go off to the other side and we're gonna kick off a little time lapse and bring it along for the ride.
Oh, we got these old ones out and they are pretty beat up. Um, you can see the ball joints have essentially collapsed. The, everything that was in it is gone. Uh, so these things definitely needed to be replaced. The new ones make it so much easier to adjust the camber uh, as we can adjust it from the bottom side instead of the top side on these. Overall, super simple. Uh, it is a Honda after all, so it is very straightforward. Uh, three bolts, use your ball joint separator. It'll make your life uh, 100 times easier. Now, hopefully we'll get a little bit better ride out of it and uh, we're gonna start working on the rear suspension soon as well.